Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Revelation chapter 9 And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him the star. Stars are like an angel. So we're at the fifth trumpet now, and a star falls from heaven unto the earth. You read all this stuff that's coming down from heaven? All these things are happening. Now we're going to start getting things that are going to happen on the earth. We've seen a star named Worm, Worm, can't say that word again. Wormwood. Here's another one coming down and hitting the earth. Man is right. There are comets. There are things that are going to come and hit this earth. But it's not going to destroy the earth. Though there will be death. It's in the book of Revelation. Satan wants you to worry now. See, Satan, everything Satan does is something that God has prescribed, just not that time yet, and not to the effect that Satan wants you to be worried about. These comets, these meteorites are going to hit the earth, but they're not going to destroy the earth. God's already told us what's going to destroy the earth, if you read your Bible, is God's going to do it. He's going to burn it all up. But there'll be no life on the earth when it happens. So, star fall from heaven unto the earth. And him, the star, was given the key of the bottomless pit. Check out the keys in the Bible. Keys of death and hell. Now here's the key to the bottomless pit. Hell. Hell has to be with the bottomless pit. And it has to be circular in such a way that there are no sides. And you just float around and round and round. And in that sense, there is no bottom. And you know the middle of this place is taken away because that was Abraham's bosom. There was a great gulf fixed between them. And he opened the bottomless pit. And you ever wonder where is this going to be? It says he falls to the earth. To him he's got the key to the bottomless pit. So it has to be somewhere in this earth that there's a gate. That an angel is going to walk up to it and click the lock and watch what happens. There rose a smoke, a smoke, out of the pit. A smoke. As the smoke of a great furnace. So Egypt was likened to the iron furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo went into a furnace. So the world's going to get what they reap, what they do to God's people. And the sun... And the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. All right, we saw in chapter 6, total, no light of the sun. We've already seen a fourth trumpet of chapter 8, verse 12, a third. Now this smoke blots out the sun. Why? Because sun is Baal. Sun has been the great deity of the earth. We're here in Daytona Beach and... How many people go down and bake themselves in front of the sun as a god? We pass by a church and they will not have weekly services but one service because it's summer. It's the worship of the sun. They start getting naked. You even have at Easter time, you'll have 
Sunrise services up and down our beach down here. And the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Can I say something current to today? Paris, you think you got uh, climate control and you think you got problems with pollution today? You wait to this point in the period of tribulation. You have your climate control meetings and all that. You're not going to stop the emissions of what God's going to set forth. This smoke is going to be deadly smoke. And it darkens the air. It darkens the sun. The air was darkened. So already you're going to start seeing with the sun, one third of the sun. The sun is darkened here. The air is dark. I think you can forget about your gardens. Plant life, if it's not dead, is going to be very, very limited. And which would you say at this point right now, as far as which of the horsemen do you think now has, has come? The one that has the, the famine. I forget what color it was. The pale, the pale one. You're not going to be able to grow much crops. I mean, man has been littering the airs with all his pollution, all with cars and, and industry, so why can't God do it? And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Uh-oh. Do you remember somewhere else where the locusts showed up? Exodus 10, 12 through 15. Why can't you teach the Bible as a history book in, in the public school system? Wouldn't you think if you taught the Bible and then when you get somebody preach on the street to them that, you know what, I don't want to go through this. Not only do I not want to go to hell, but if I'm going to live before I go to hell and there's an opportunity that I can miss these events by trusting in Christ, I, I do it. Because like I said, if the rapture happened today, now, I don't know how long after the rapture, the tribulation period starts, but after the church is gone, there is at least a minimum of seven years. People alive, when the rapture happens, are going to go through this. Your parents, your siblings, your co-workers, people that are attending your church. If you taught this in the public school system, the history of Exodus and the Jews, and then when you pick up the book of Revelation, my God, it, history does repeat itself. And America's now at the point she's trying to erase her history. It's going to happen again. And those people are not going to know how to handle it because they did not study it. Locusts on the earth. I right, so what? It's locust. And unto them was given power. Ooh, power. As the scorpions of the earth have power. Ooh, these are no ordinary locusts. And it was commanded them, the locusts, that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Well, God already got rid of a third of it. What's ever left over, locusts, you keep your you keep your mouth off the grass. You hear me? Yes, sir, God. Neither any green thing. If it's green, you don't eat it. Yes, Lord. Neither any tree. Well, God's already wiped out a third of the tree. Locust. I don't want you to eat grass. I don't want you to eat any green thing. I don't want you to eat any trees. That's what a locust diet is. Go ask Pharaoh in Exodus. The only thing they did not eat was what had not come out of the ground yet. And the hail got that later. So these animals are going to be starving. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Well, go back over here to chapter 7. And read verse 4, and I heard the number of them which were sealed. 
they were sealed 144,000, all of the tribes and the children of Israel. They won't be touched by these locusts. Gentiles and Jews not sealed. That have not been caught up to the throne yet. Or chapter 7 verse 13, 14, 15. Verse 9 really to say. So the 144,000 are not going to be touched by these. Now, why are not the green, the grass, and the trees, not? why are they not touched? I don't know. But they have touched men that don't have the seal of God. Now, what's Mr. Jehovah Witness going to say when he gets bit by these things? Imagine them coming to your door in the tribulation period and they get stung. So, and to them, the locusts, look at three verses on the locusts. It was given that they should not kill them, the people of the earth. But they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. When he striketh a man, I have never been bitten by a scorpion. Okay, I don't know what it's like. Thank God I don't know what it's like. But that bite, whatever that scorpion does, it meant five months. You know what's ironic? You can pick up the Bible and say, ah, I bit. Oh, man, I was bit by a scorpion. The Bible says five months, January, February, March, April, May. <laughs> this will be done within May. Long five months. Just watch what the Bible says. It ain't going to be that easy, is it? It almost looks like there'll be no medicine or no relief. Because watch. And in those days shall men, plural, seek death and shall not find it. It's God and not science. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them and check out Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8 now here, here I'm, I'm kind of morbid I kind of think weird things here's a guy now think about this no death no relief here's a guy who's been bitten by one of these locusts ah, he's in pain he is suffering he's not gonna realize the five months he gets all the way on top of the Empire State Building gets all the way on top of the Empire State Building and he does the most beautiful swan dive ever. Or the worst belly flop ever. And he lands on the streets of New York. And gets hit by a bus and 12 taxi cabs. And he's not dead. A guy gets bit by one of these things. He takes a shotgun and he loads it up with two cartridges and blows two cartridges into his head and he's not dead. And he's not going to die. Science, you got it. You have arrived in Revelation chapter 9. There is no death. You got it. There it is. God has allowed you not to die. And you know what you're going to want to do? You're going to want to die. Now, isn't that remarkable? We are going through the advances of medicine and, and, and the science of, of, of the human body, trying to make it so men will never die, and here they are, they're not going to die, and they're going to try to die. And they're going to fail. I guarantee with a pain of five months, with no relief at all, I guarantee they're going to try every way possible to kill themselves. And it says... Death shall flee from it. It's not going to happen. In many cases, like I said, that guy who jumps off the Empire State Building, hey, they were jumping off buildings and out of the banks during the Depression. They were diving out, and not to be more, but 9-11, there were pictures of people falling out of the buildings. 
I'm sorry that happened. But in the tribulation period, you're going to hit that pavement and you're going to get back up and you're going to be in worse condition than you were when you were bit. And you're going to go to the doctor and you're not going to ask for medicine. You're going to ask for him to kill you. Well, to die, we've reached what we want. And you know they're going to take the bragging right. Well, we've reached where we wanted to reach. We finally got it where man will never die. Well, darn it. I want to die. Sorry. Suffer. By the way, I can't see you if you don't have the mark. Can't go to the hospital if you don't have the mark. But those that have God's mark will not be touched. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts. You ready for this one? We're going to get a little side. We don't know when Jesus was born. but we're gonna, We know more about the locusts than we do about Jesus' birth. The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. That's a big locust. That is a huge locust if he's the size of a horse. And on their heads, the locusts were as it were crowns like goat. Notice the crowns. The man on the horse had a crown. These locusts have a crown. Mystery Babylon is going to have a crown. Jesus is going to have crowns. There are crowns being tossed to God's feet by the 24 elders, but I have not seen anything of Christians with their crowns. I think I know what I think God knows what crowns are. I think we need to read the Bible and, and take the Bible to what it says and not add to our own lives. These things have crowns. Like gold. It's funny how these locusts are gonna have crowns, but some Christians won't. The judgment seat of Christ has already happened. There are Christians with bald heads, no rewards. Burnt up, and here are locusts are coming out of the pit, and they got crowns. And their faces were as the faces of men. Well, that's kind of interesting. You ever see statues that have animal bodies with faces of men on them? Satan knows his Bible, and they had hair. I didn't know look at that hair. I know, huh? I know, I know, I know. Horses have manes, but had hair as the hair of a woman. These things are bisexual. They got the face of a man and they're a woman. See where we're going? I can't tell what what bathroom to use in the grocery store. We're only preparing you for the tribulation. Hey, that looks like a he she. Oh, oh well, cares. So the so is the one that sits next to me in the classroom. So is my co-worker. They look like he, she. They don't even know what they are. Here they are. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Now these are some magnificent beasts. And they're in the earth right now. Waiting for that angel to come forth and unlock that door. After the church is raptured. Aren't you glad that the Bible says the church goes first? And they had breastplate. <laughs> come on, Lord. These locusts have breastplates. As it were breastplates of iron. Who made them? And why? Iron is a bad thing in the Bible. There is not anything good spoken about iron in the Bible. They And this would be your griffin. You know, the lion with the wings. Because look, the sound of their wings. Uh-oh, they have wings. Not angels. Was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. These things are flying. 
I'm just, I know they got like, these things are like lions, they got the face of men, they got hair like women, they got teeth of lions, and they add to wings. I don't even think you could draw a picture like this. And they're quick because it's, as it's running to battle, as the sound, I never heard a chariot. I can imagine what it sounds like. Okay. We're done. And they had tail. <laughs> <laughs> like unto scorpions. Forget Hollywood in their movies. Forget the, the horror story. This is a horror enough. This is 3D. Don't worry about the zombies. Worry about the locusts. And there was stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. So we got a little description about what is going on here. Okay, now we're done. And they had a king over them. A king over these, over these people. Which is the angel of the bottomless earth. Angels everywhere. This is the angel in charge of hell. There are an angels over the church. There's an angel over the, the over the Israel, Michael. Now there's an angel over the bottomless pitch which name is hey hey Hebrew tongue Abaddon but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon God says this is so important Christian study to show thyself approved unto God here's a Hebrew and here's a Greek word that you can know Forget the rest of the Hebrew and Greek here are two Hebrew and Greek words I want you to know they're in my Bible I want you to know about it, and I want you to know Apollyon. I want you to know those. How's that? And they both mean destroyer. And they're going to destroy his, his army of these locusts that are completely woo-hoo. Now watch this. You ready? One woe is past, and behold, there come two two woes more hereafter. That was a woe. Look at chapter 8, verse 13. I, I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, whoa, whoa. One is already done. That woe is these creatures. No death. Pain five months with the destroyer being their head. Now you got a guy who's on a white horse. Okay? He's going to bring peace. You got another horse after him that brings war. You got another horse that brings famine. You got another horse that brings death and hell. You got this guy, he's bringing pain. No death. And you can't really lay this all out on how there's a trumpet and how does it seal, how does the, how do they lay out? Because we're not told how long this happened. I mean, five months, but when? And how long is the duration? Are these people bitten in one particular month and then they suffer five months? Or it could be three months later and someone's bitten and he's still got to do five months? It's not say all we know is the period is five months. Okay. One woe is past, and behold, there are two woes more there hereafter. Thank God I am not going through the tribulation period. Verses three through twelve, thank God. The rapture of the church. Thank you, God. You want to go through this? And the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. I heard a voice from the four horns. Wait a minute. The golden incense altar, now the horns are speaking. We already been told that the prayer of the incense of the saints that come before God, that is the prayer of the saints. Now here is the golden altar of incense, 
of prayers and the horns are speaking. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels. You know how many angels there are? There, there, there's a ton of angels. Let's look at chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds. Well, now, back here, verse 14, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now the river Euphrates has four angels. There are seven angels that have seven trumpets. There are seven angels that are over the seven churches. And the four angels were loosed, let go. They're tied up somehow, bonded, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of man oh now we're going to go to the third of man again verse 11 of chapter 8 says the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of warriors became wormwood many men died okay many men had died now there's death a third of the men of the population of the world is going to be slain by these angels. Death has come back. So now we can put ourselves back at some of those, those horsemen. Death and hell. The famine. But the famines are not caused by the locusts because the locusts are told, don't touch the green stuff. So where to place this locust thing, I don't know at all. But it has to be between the fourth and the sixteenth trumpet. It has to be. They're in order. So, third part of the man. One third of the population of this earth is going to be killed by these angels. They've already been starting to die. There's going to be a mass of killings and death in the tribulation period, minus this five months we just read about. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. It's unnumerable. And I heard the number of them. And, I, and thus I saw... John saw the horses in the vision, in them that sat on them, the riders, having blessed breastplates of fire. Ouch. Talk about heartburn. These guys are holding up <coughs> and are wearing fire. And Jacob, and that's either a plant or a gem. A gem would be red. And brimstone. You ever strike a match and get that foul smell in your nose hair? That's brimstone. That's sulfur. These guys stink. They smell like rotten eggs. And the heads of the horses were as the head of lions. So these are not the same thing as a locust. Because a locust had teeth of a lion and a head of a man. And as you go back to the Old Testament, some of David's mighty men were faced with men that had heads like lions. There was a tribe, I think it was of Dan, they had a head, like a face, like a lion. Thank you. So look at a lion. All that hair. Does not nature tell yourself for a man to have long hair? What was that? And the flat nose. And the flat nose. I mean, if you saw somebody like this walking down the street, wouldn't you cross? 
and out of their mouths, okay, ready, issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Whew, talk about bad breath. The fifth and the sixth trumpet is nothing to sneeze at. Meanwhile, lions are already running through the land of Palestine. We, we saw earlier that the animals are going to go crazy. And we read in the Bible, the Old Testament, lions have slew the people. There was a prophet that spoke against God's order. He was not supposed to go back to Bethel. He disobeyed God. A lion tore him in pieces and sat there with the ass. Like, hey, how you guys doing? Just did what God told me to do. It was time that when Israel went into captivity, they put people in the land and they served all kinds of gods and all that. And the lions were devouring them. And they sent the wrong priest in there and the lions just through devouring. When lions hunt, if you want to read good, interesting about animals, when lions hunt, they look for the weak. I would be weak after the locusts. They know which animal is the oldest. They know which animal is the weakest. And the pack will go for that. And the pack is all around the herd. And they can communicate. And they will attack the weakest, the youngest of that herd. And once they get that animal, they will suck on that throat, that neck of that animal, until that animal suffocates of its own blood. And then, while still life in that, the other animals, will, other lions will come and start devouring in the final time of their life. Many men in Africa had no idea that their death came by a lion. That's how quick they attacked. It has been known that men will be sleeping in a tent or wherever, and they're just dragged out in the middle of the night, and no one has even known it. Study lions. Heads of lions and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by fire, being burned. If that's not painful enough, third degree burns and by smoke they can't breathe they're suffocated and by the brimstone the smell is just so noxious which issued out of their mouths that's interesting and their power is in their mouth and in their tails for their tails were like unto serpents. Oh, these are some interesting animals. And their heads. Now watch this. P.S. And their heads. P.S. And with them they do hurt. <laughs> P.S. It does hurt. That's an interesting so P.S. Like yeah. And the end of their tail is the head of so if Moses was chasing this thing around in front of David, he would have been bit no matter what. Remember when Moses' rod turned to a snake and he's running from it? You can't run from this thing. Either end, you're going to be bit. And if you grab his tail, the serpent, like Moses did, that lion's going to come around and throw fire at your face. If not, he's going to breathe on you, the smoke or the, or the brimstone. There's no victory over this thing. Actually, it's a horse with a lion's head. Yeah. It's not really a lion. He's got the face of a lion. And he's the horseman. So he's quick. Horses are quick. I mean, you imagine this thing at the merry-go-round chasing little kids around? <laughs> okay. Now, this is the weirdest thing that you ever could see. There's another part just like this in the book of Revelation. And the rest of the men, those who survived, two-thirds of the men of the population of the world, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their, repented not of the works of their hands. This did not get them to do right. That they should not worship devils. 
They're continuing to worship devils. Devil worship is among the tribulation period. And they're not giving it up just what, after what you, what you just saw or read about. Idols of gold. They still got their golden idols. They're not going to give them up. And silver and brass and stone and of wood. They're not going to give that up. This does not change their minds for God. It just keeps them going stronger for Satan. This is the danger of the Roman Catholic Church. This verse right here. Because whatever is attracted them into this kind of worship. No matter what God will lay in their life. Whatever God will throw on their life for good. They will not get right. They will not repent. You got to face it. Some of your family, some of your siblings, some of your friends are not going to get right. The Bible says many will go the broad way. No matter what you pray, no matter how you seek God for their souls. Men will not get right. Look what it said. The rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues. That has to be the entire population of tribulation. The rest that did not die did not repent. That's what it says. The whole world has not gone to God in Jesus Christ. Only the 144,000 because none of those plagues touched them. Out of the whole world, you can tell at this point right now, there's only 144,000 right people in the eyes of God. And who knows what the population is. That's a remarkable statement of man and his enemy, God. You say, well, if you got any kind of public ministry, well, they mistreat us. They don't listen. They won't get right. That's what the Bible says. Now watch. Neither repented. They will not repent. They of their murders. They're still murdering people in the tribulation period. If the angel's not killing a third of them, if they're not dying by all the plagues, those who are surviving, they're being killed by other men. And some of those murderers are killing Jews. Nor of their sorceries. Magic will not stop in the tribulation period. You will still go to the kingdom. You will still go watch those movies about the sorcerers and all that. You will still have magic. Let me ask you, in the book of Exodus, did they ever get rid of those Egyptian sorcerers and magicians? No, they were still there. Nor their fornication, sexual sins, has not stopped. And nor their theft, they are still going to steal from people. And we close this chapter with two remarkable animals, one of no death for five months, and then we get back to death yet, and we see what man is. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All our righteousness are as a filthy rag. In the eyes of God, these men are non-repenters. They will not get right. Don't put all your faith, and someone said, well, in the end, all will be judged faithful and God will send everybody to heaven. Bull. Bull. If I'm going to heaven with the people of verse 20 and 21, I want God to send me into hell. To burn forever. I don't want to be in glory. I do not want to be in New Jerusalem with these people. Because they don't love God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. I don't want anything to do with them. And they're killing God's people. And I'm told by the Bible, I'm the blessed Israel. I'm the pray for Israel. If I help Israel, God will bless me. That's the promises. And it's remarkable that man will not get right. Man is not good. That's what the Bible says. 
Man has no sense and no wisdom of God. That's what the Bible says. 